Hello, and welcome to Dark and Stormy Book Club. Malice Domestic is quickly approaching. We like to dedicate at least as much of our program for the month before Malice to the nominees for Agatha Awards. We have nine nominee interviews that we have taken in the last few weeks. We are going to feature a few of them each week for the next few weeks until Malice. We have two nominees this week. They were both nominated for Best First Novel. The first nominee will be Joan Long, and she was nominated for her book called The Finalist. And then we will have a discussion with M.A. or Mary Monin, and she was nominated for Best First for her book, Death in the Aegean. Enjoy! I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. A podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. We would like to welcome to the program Joan Long. She is the author of The Finalist, which is nominated for an Agatha for a Best First Novel. Welcome, Joan. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. We, unfortunately, haven't had a chance to read your book yet. Can you give us a ballpark picture of what it's about? I would say in one sentence or two that it's strangers trapped on a remote tropical island. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. Oh. Was it a three-hour tour? I know. I thought <laughs> of that. <laughs> it starts on a boat. Does it? <laughs> yes, was, it, it does. Called the, was it called the minnow? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in, the, in my book, it's called the thrill seeker. Oh. What kind of boat is it? It's a charter boat that goes okay. from Florida to a remote island in the tropics. I love to write about warm weather settings. I don't understand anything about being up north. I'm a third generation Floridian. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Well, Very well, cool. We're in frigid Maryland. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's right, because I'm in super cold Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's a, I do like Florida. I do remember though we used to live in California and I flew to Florida. I got off the plane. I walked out into the parking garage and I went <gasps> because I couldn't breathe. The air was like soup. And I it was is. like, oh, I totally <laughs> forgot what humidity was. We, do Cal we lived in the desert in California. So it's a it'll be 114, but it's dry as anything. And it, there, I was like, "All right, get your gills back out because <laughs> this is yeah, not." It's eighty-two here today, and all my flowers are blooming, and it's January. Oh, oh my goodness! It's uh, uh, thirty-four here, and not a single flower is blooming anyway. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> we don't have flowers here till at least April. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your first book, but was it the first book you ever wrote? No, it's not the first book, of okay. course. <laughs> I had those practice novels that are hidden away that no one should ever. They're yeah. all drawer babies that no one ever <laughs> sees them again. <laughs> They're the ones I learned on. Were you excited when you got the nomination? Oh, I, I'm still floating. It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm very excited about it. 
are you going to come to Malice? Absolutely. Good. We'll look forward to meeting you. I have my plane tickets. I have my hotel room. I have my clothes for all of those cold conference rooms. <laughs> bring, bring a sweater. <laughs> yes. Or a parka. I'm from Florida, remember? That's true. <laughs> well, yeah. So we're going to find her with a scarf and mittens. mittens and yes. I saw hat on. And I'm going to be like, Joan. Exactly. Honey, I love you. Is that you. a problem? <laughs> no, not at all. Not, just make it fancy. You could fancy up a parka. You'd be good. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what the book is about, because I haven't had a chance to read it. Is it cozy mystery, more thriller? What kind of book are we talking? It is very much a traditional. It's not a cozy. It's not a thriller. It's traditional okay. mystery. Awesome. And okay. In my book, I have a competition, and it is between authors. They have been summoned to the island, they are finalists in a contest to finish the last novel of a famous author who has died unexpectedly. Oh. So they have seven days to write the last 25 pages of his book. Okay. And when they get there, they find that there is no communication with the outside world. They don't have cell phones, they don't have a satellite phone. There isn't any way to talk to anyone when a dead body drops. There's no police, no one but them. And there's only 12 people or less on the island. Ooh, that so sounds really by dropping, intriguing. do you mean it like comes out of the sky or one, does <laughs> one of them die? One of them dies. Oh, okay. Oh. Is it like, a, and then there were none sort of is, thing? Yes, it is very much like that. I love that it. I was hoping for. And Very this great. is the kind of book that you like to also read. How did the idea come to you that this is the kind of thing you wanted to write? It is the kind of book I enjoy. And the reason I started this book is I was at a conference back in 2016. And one of the speakers was Ace Atkins. Mm. At the time, he was doing Robert B. Parker Spencer series. And then all of a sudden, they announced that Reed Farrell Coleman was going to do the Jesse Stone series, also by Robert B. Parker. And it just clicked in my head. I thought, well, did they have to compete to do this? How did it happen that yeah. two authors are writing for the same man who died? Fascinating. I love it. That is wonderful. Um, I'm very much looking forward to reading that. Do you have a particular protagonist? I do. Her name is Risa Marr. She's a widowed mom, has a three-year-old, had had to leave her child for a week while she is on this island. And she is desperate to get back to her and things are not going well. Ooh. Do you foresee this as a series? Everyone asked me if I would please write a sequel. And I wasn't planning to, but I might change my mind. Oh, that would be good. I've got to read this. Amazing. Isn't it funny, though, that when the readers come in and they're like, oh, I loved it. And you're like, great. Something else is coming out next year. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> no, no, that, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, I love this world. Please write again. And you're like, but I don't have any. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. That's not what I said. And yet you want to be able to pull the things that people loved about it and continue that. Right. Do you prefer single titles or would you like to write a series? When I write, I think about it as being a single title. And that's primarily what I read. But I will read the same authors over and over and over. Okay. I, I, I oh, yeah. do have my favorites. Yeah. And that makes sense. Uh, when I find somebody who I love their voice, that's it for me. I, I don't care if it's single title. I don't care if it's a series. I don't care if it's your grocery list. I may buy that too. And so obviously, I mean, hopefully with the nomination, this will get more people interested in the book and reading it because they'll want to know what the hype is about. Right. Mm -hmm. I hope Good. so. That would yeah. be wonderful. That's what we should make happen. <laughs> so as far as best first, do you feel like, yay, now I have to keep on doing really awesome things, which I was going to do anyway? <laughs> That's a good question. 
I would love to do awesome things for every book. I'm not sure it will happen, but I am working on something now that really has sparked my interest. I don't even have a title for it. It is suspense instead of a mystery. Interesting. Oh. Do you think that that parallels closely enough that someone who loved your dream will take a chance on your suspense? I think so. When they read the finalists, there is a lot of suspense in it. Okay. And really, I've thrown everything possible at my protagonist, the poor uh, woman. I feel sorry for her. All right. Well, Joan, we thank you for talking with us, and we look forward to meeting you at Malice. Thank you. Um, It'll be great to see you there. Thank you so much for having me. It was great seeing both of you. Yes, it was too. nice meeting you, and we look forward to meeting you in person. Thank and you. you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Joan. Bye -bye. We thank Joan for visiting with us. And now our second interview will be with M.A. or Mary Monin. We would like to welcome M.A. or Mary Monin to the program. And she is nominated for a Best First Novel for her book, Death in the Aegean. Welcome, Mary. Thank you so much for having me. Since we just got this list, can you tell us a ballpark description of your book? Basically, the back cover blurb is when private banker Stephanie Adams goes on a much needed vacation to the Greek Isles. She is suspected of murdering a bride who accuses her deceased father of artifact theft. The bride's accusation also ties Stephanie, a former archeology span student, to the theft of a newly discovered gold Minoan statue, the Akrotiri snake goddess. With two high profile crimes to solve, Greek police are under pressure and both crimes lead straight to Stephanie. Ooh, Ooh, that sounds yummy. <laughs> and sassy. I yeah. like it. Is it like a soft-boiled mystery, hard-boiled? Like what? Give me a... Um, I think of it as a traditional. Okay, you know, yes. It, that was going to be the next word. Okay, yeah. so traditional mystery. So our main character is Stephanie? Yes. Or do the Greek police have a part, like... POV wise, point of view wise? No, it's um, her. strictly from one point of view, oh. from Stephanie's point of view. So, now, like Misty said before, is it an I or a they? Oh, it's third person. Okay. Okay. Third person. All right. Yeah. Nice. Now, do you like writing in third person? Do you find that it's more freeing to not be like right down in their head and only what they see is what you can talk about? Well, I like it, but I think I write in a what's known as a close third. Uh -huh. It's like I'm like right over her shoulder. Oh, yeah. I've written short stories in first person, and I enjoy that too. When I first wrote it, before I got it accepted for publication, I had it in two point of views, both Stephanie and Thomas, another main character. But I decided to go the traditional mystery route with just a single point of view, and that's sold. So I'm real happy about that. Hey, <laughs> and who did it come out from? Level Best Books. Oh, do you yeah. love working with them? I do. I absolutely do. Do they put the hardcover out first? No, it's paperback and ebook. Okay. Very, very cool. So when you got the notification that you were nominated for i love it best first <laughs> i'd like did you scream did you order some I, cake? well i didn't scream i'm an early morning riser so it was like oh. 5 p.m oh. and the first thing i do when i have my cup of coffee is i sit on the sofa and watch murder she wrote and <laughs> as you do as, as, you as do. everybody open, does yeah open my email and it was said dear ma we are happy to inform you I didn't read any further. I just oh. said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I looked at my husband, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it was more like a, like a low level screen. Like it was, it a, was, it was know, jubilation, but held down at a volume due to the fact that it yes. was pre-sunrise. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
we'll, we'll get yeah, yeah, that was it was a little lower than when I got my contract. Now that was jumping up and down for about half an hour. <laughs> Good for you. Does Level Best do phone calls or do they do emails? It was an email. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm sure also it's very exciting to be recognized that for our first book, is this going to be the beginning of a series? Or- it, is. It, it is a series. It's okay. the Intrepid Traveler series. And oh. I just turned in book two nice. to Level Best. And- do you have a title? Yes. Book two is Death on the Grand Canal. Ooh. Oh. So will she be like a traveling sleuth then because of the way that you yes. built her? Yes. She'll be in Italy, of course, Grand Canal being Venice. Right. Right. Now, my question is, how can an accountant afford to travel to all these places? Good question. She has been devoted to her job, spending long hours, and has tucked away a very nice nest egg. Oh, okay. Ooh. So no fixing the books or anything. <laughs> I mean, no. not yet. We're still not early yet. in the series, Anne. Yeah. Oh, there know. are so many possibilities. I love it. And so, Stephanie, did she come to you or did you search for her when you were writing this book? Mm. Well, I got the idea for the book when my husband and I went to the Greek islands. We went to Greece and went to Santorini and Crete and... She just came to me, I have to say. She just came it. to me. It's like, I, I would it. like to have, you know, something happen here. And this is the kind of woman. Now, is she a strong woman? She's learned from being used, let's say. Uh, she, she's on a much needed vacation because after being promised the vice presidency of her small private bank for three years, she uh, watched it being given to the nephew of the owner. Oh, so she, she's got a bit of a chip on her shoulder. Okay, yes. see, but I like them. I you think need... he needs to be murdered in a... No! <laughs> <laughs> it's my job, you're gone. I mean, I really find that I very much enjoy books where the person in there is not perfect. They are going through something, whether or not it's something different in even every book or whether it's just growth in general... Do you find in traditional mysteries, because I know for cozy mysteries, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are there for the community. They want to see how the grandma's doing. They want to see how your sleuth is doing. Are they still dating that guy? So a traditional mystery, is that that kind of set up in the same way? With a much smaller group, one of the people is going with her to book two and, and in the series, but not the entire community. Okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong. I mean, I've seen cozy mysteries like that too. Donna Andrews with the bird books will always have parrots and stuff like that. It's Meg and her boyfriend. I, I don't believe in the beginning, at least they weren't married. It can be a small community. It doesn't need to yeah. be extensive because mainly they're coming in for the main character. Right. Exactly. And that's what carries through in the traditional series more. More that so the awesome. actual community with, you know, everybody around. Okay. Well, Mary, we thank you for talking with us. Yes. Listen to your podcast. Oh, you do? Good. And I love it. It's like hanging out with your good friends that like the same books as you do. <laughs> thank good. you. Thank you. That is the purpose right there in like one sentence. That's a beautiful thing. Mary, you enjoyed the rest of your day, and thanks for talking with us. Thank you for having me. Okay. And I'll see you at Malice. See you at Malice. Right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We thank both these lovely ladies for joining us, and we wish them good luck. I'm sorry they can't both win. I look forward to reading their books and... We look forward to meeting them and the other nominees at Malice. Trivia! Last week's question was, Which mystery author worked at a job and had to dress up as a tuxedo wearing yogurt? A. Ellie Griffith B. Sue Grafton C. Louise Penny, or D. Gillian Flynn? The answer is D. Gillian Flynn. Flynn attended Bishop Maja 
High School and graduated in 1989. As a young woman, she worked several odd jobs, which required her to do things such as dress up as a giant yogurt cone who wore a tuxedo. This week's question is, High Tower Court Building had what influence on author Michael Connolly? A. He thought it was haunted. B. He wanted to feature it in his book. C. He wanted to live there. Or D. He wanted to have it renamed. Tune in next week for the answer. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Thank you for listening. We hope you join us next week when we have at least two more of the nominees for Agatha Awards. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye. Bye.